This is a, a disc. This is live. We are on live television. All that is required to realize the self is to be still. What can be easier than that? That's one aspect that he talks about, he points. Because stillness is who we are, it's recognizing. It's like awakening to that which is absolutely still within, even right now. And it is the stillness when there's no thought, or even the momentum of thought, the movement of thought subside, then the stillness and the senses are one, the sense of perception. So Say that like, again. Say that again, please. Stillness is who you are. And then there's movement of thought. When the movement subsides or there's no identification with the thought, there is no ego. So the stillness and the sense of perception are one. Mm. So... Mm -hmm. This is what I see he's pointing. And then he, he, there's another verse that he talks, there is no greater mystery than this. Being reality ourselves, we seek to gain reality. We think that there is something hiding our reality and that it must be destroyed before the reality is gained. It is ridiculous. A day will dawn when you will yourself laugh at your own efforts. That which will be on that day you laugh is also here and now. Mm. How beautiful. So we can look at it. There's no greater mystery than this. Being reality ourselves, we seek to gain reality. Mm. So the seeker must disappear and then reality is seeking itself by itself. Nazir Gadatta points that when the seeker disappears, the seeking continues. That means the self is being fascinated by itself into itself. Mm. It's mm. like the mind is fascinated mm. by an object mm -hmm. due to self-awareness. Mm. When mm -hmm. the mind is absorbed, or the sense of separation of I am a separate entity is absorbed, is lost, then if, and I'm talking in that moment, not in the future, mm -hmm. then seeking continues because it's the self is mesmerized, absorbed into itself, fascinated. Mm -hmm. So would you say the mind is fascinated by itself? No, it's the self. The self, not the mind with the using the self. Yeah, using the self. Being fascinated by awareness itself. No, oh, okay. So that's aware okay. Hmm. Okay. We can not to keep it as a con conceptual idea, you might recognize that right now that which listens is awareness within. This awareness yeah. is mm. interested in, in itself. Mm.
if we go back, there is no greater mystery than this. Being reality ourselves, we seek to gain reality. The mind cannot gain reality. The thought cannot gain reality. We are the reality. So there was a wise man who said, what you're looking for is where you're looking from. Looking from looking. What you're looking for. Oh, yes, okay. Where yeah. you're looking from. Yeah. Mm. Awareness. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm. Yeah, awareness or in this, in the relative world, it's, you're looking from your reality. Okay. So, what you're looking for, it's, the mind is looking for awareness. Mm. What you're looking for is where you're looking from. And you are looking mm. from awareness at the one who's looking for awareness. Mm-hmm. Therefore you be therefore you are awareness. Yes. yes. There is another saying that you probably have heard, you are what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. Same. So you are yeah. is who you are. What you. you is the individual entity looking for who you are. Yeah. Mm. And the one who is looking for who you are subside and who you are sees itself by itself mm. and the more we start to when we hear this word suddenly it flips our attention it suddenly awakens who we are that was hypnotized by divine power we do not know and we do not understand how this mm. Hypnosis came about. Mm. Mm. Um, okay, and nobody, even even Romana, doesn't speak to how it happens, huh? The mechanism. They point that it's the power of illusion. Power so, of illusion. I don't power know. of illusion, and because it is an illusion, yes, it it does not really exist. So, what will we talk about a non-existent entity? Yeah, the non-existent entity, right? <laughs> sort of a double negative. It is a bit. A bit. See another phrase of this. It's clear, isn't it? It's good, it really is good. It's it, it just extended. It's like he's in the room with the television here, even though that's clearer to watch. How's your sister? She's great. She designing? No, she's not yet available mentally, I guess, for it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So, okay. The body itself is not more than, a, than our thought. There can be no body in the absence of thought. The world is only spiritual. Since you are identifying yourself with the physical body, you speak of this world as being physical. Whereas that which is, is only spiritual. We can see that... Even scientifically. If we would break it for the... When we begin, all of us, born, then we believe the world is real. And then in the process of awakening, we start to come to see that the world is unreal. That the world is just 
a conceptual image in our mind. Mm -hmm. And then fully, full realization is that the world and the self, or the world and awareness, is one and the same. Mm -hmm. Because the I, as awareness, I'm one with the world. I'm one with every thought. I'm one with every object of perception. And that world is within awareness. Awareness exists without the phenomenal world. The phenomenal world cannot appear without awareness. Mm -hmm. When it appears, I am one with it as awareness. Mm -hmm. And that's what it is pointing to. It. That basically, awareness is ab absolutely silently aware. The body and the, the objects of perception never say anything. They never speak. The only thing that that is in motion or speaks is the, the movement of the mind. So when the thoughts subside, awareness and the object is one and the same. Mm -hmm. So, yes. so is, are you saying that also does it sound, it sounds like, you're, like he's saying or you're saying is that uh, awareness actually creates this illusion. Awareness enables this illusion, illusion to be. It doesn't to create be. because creation is movement, yet yes. awareness enables everything. Okay. Mm. And from awareness, we do not negate anything mm. because awareness never negates neither thought mm. nor form, objects. Mm. Mm. And there is never a problem with objects and thoughts. It's just the forgetting that I am the awareness and mistaking myself to be an individual entity. Mm. The pure mm. experiencer of pleasure mm. and pain. Mm. The thinker of the thoughts. Mm. Mm -hmm. Means when the thoughts appear and I don't get entangled or involved with the thoughts, the thinker is gone. Yet when a thought appears, and I start to be entangled with the thought, the thinker begins and I identify that I mm. am as a separate entity. Yeah. Well, oh, it's such a, uh, it's, uh, it's a, it's a catch-22 situation. It is oh, phenomenal how it happens, but that's um, exactly how it happens. I can witness that myself. Um, it's it's it it actually is the um, I don't want to use the word creation. It it is what presents the illusion. Yes, and, and the beauty is that this is where um, Nazir Gadatta talks about that. Um, there's a nice video of 20 minutes. I'll, we'll, I'll send it to you when we finish. The link. Okay. Oh, good. Yeah. All right. that the self wants us to learn self-awareness, self-control, and self-surrender. Mm. So yeah. use the word. Mm. Yeah. It's great. You use the word wants. Okay. Yes. Because mm. it's it's awareness call itself back to itself because uh -huh. when the thought appears and I identify with them, the attention goes to the thoughts yeah. and it's almost uh -huh. like awareness lost itself in the mm. thought process. So, so, the projection, so the projection of that is actually called the ego. Yes. The actually the, the thinker, the projection of it. Uh huh. Oh. So it's very mechanical. It's, you know, very, very, it's mechanical and it's obvious. Oh. And where's the, and that's in his video? Yeah, he talks about it. I'll send it. 
and in Vashista, it talks about four gates that four, enable okay. one to um, uh, gates to the self. And he talks about the first one gate. He talks about self-control. And the way he defines self-control is that the thought subsides in awareness or the mind subsides in awareness. This is self-control. means the self is just aware of itself. Whether there's movement of thought, there's no sense of doership or mm. no thinker, or when the thoughts subside completely. So that's thought gate two. one? That's gate one? One of the gates. That's okay. when basically awareness see through the senses. Mm. Without any interpretation, judgment, reaction, or mm. resistance. Mm. Oh, yeah, beautiful. Ordinary. Uh, or, or ordinary but spectacular. <laughs> I mean, uh, if we look and we ask majority of the people, please tell us what is your life. So, one would say, okay, life is the objects of the world for me is my life. It's the sense of perception. What I perceive through my senses is is my mm. life. My feelings and emotion is my life. Mm. And the thoughts I'm having is my life. Mm -hmm. And That's... this is wonderful, except mm. one to have to ask, is this all there is? What happens when there is no thought and the senses open? Isn't it awareness enables what you call your life to even happen? Mm. And mm. once you wake up to this dimension, to yeah. be with yourself as awareness, then you start to derive your sense of of being from awareness and not from I am a separate entity. Mm. Even if the separate entity, the personality, doesn't disappear, mm. you identify, you derive your sense of being from your true mm. self and not mm. from the thinking or mm. just emotion or sense perception. So it's the, it's the, uh, it's very important then is to understand for those people that want to be or want to experience this gate one is not to have fear that they're going to lose anything. That's right. This is misunderstanding that this it's is what the mind makes up an idea that mm. is not a comment that if I wake up to who I am, the mind mm. says, I, mm. I, 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 I'm going to lose everything. I'm going to lose my children, my job. Yeah, it's it's um, yeah, it's it's a it's it's a danger. It could be a very dangerous p place to be in for those that are not uh, prepared. So what we can see is that because the mind is a funny thing, it can interpret things in any way it wants to or imagines to. So. This is why someone can hear particular words and it would interpret it and totally distort it. Mm. And someone else would hear the words and it will be, it will hit home right away and it would mm. be crystal clear. Mm. The words that were spoken were the same words. The way they were interpreted or, it's not the same. or perceived were, was totally different. So that interpretation, where does it happen? In the mind. In the mind, and it brings it, and, and it comes from the past, huh? Memories. Yeah, except some words brings you right into awareness, back to you. 
Mm. And then from awareness, there is an understanding, a deeper understanding. And then a thought comes and there is understanding in the mind regarding mm. what was the intelligence and the wisdom that came from awareness. Awareness is is knowledge, is absolute knowledge, means mm. Mm. it is the knowingness of who you are. And mm. in that knowingness of who you are, everything appears, the whole phenomena universe, mm. the whole cosmic so, universe. So what is the... Mech what is in the knowledge of the self appears the cosmic universe, but isn't the cosmic universe illusion? Yes, in the beginning. When you ah. realize that you are the awareness, awareness doesn't have any idea about the cosmic intelligence that mm -hmm. was derived from itself. <laughs> Right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So it is just awareness illuminating everything. Mm. The okay. Thought, the yes. The perception. Okay. That you know what? What is the mechanism, or what makes that happen? That you say that that one word will open up. oneself into awareness but for somebody else it 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 doesn't do anything um, why why does that happen not really it's a no it's mechanically a self protecting mechanism of the of the ego oh, oh. It's, it's it's not ready oh really look when we do defend the first thing we do is this, means we block, right? We attack. Yes. We do this. Yeah. We push. So it's not, so as an analogy, the awareness of that comes through the world of the being and the awareness of the other being is the same awareness, yet when it push like that, defend, then Present the ego presents itself to be more real than awareness itself mm. from the point of view of the other person. So it's a defense process. He, 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 that person identifies himself with that, and then awareness which sees that, which is he is the awareness, is overlooked. Mm. And and that's in the, and that's somewhere in the memory or in the, somewhere in the memory or somewhere something that defense system, or is it just inbred? It's it's the ego because the ego is unreal. It must protect the illusion, and that's how it validates its existence. Mm. So the gate number one is impossible for that person. Yes. So now we move. They have another gate in Vashista. He points another gate. Okay. And the other gate is basically um, contentment. Being, being content. Mm. Content means, if we really look at contentment, it means the desire subsides and you're one with what is. Mm. When you're one with what is, who is that one that is one mm. with what is? It's your true self. No, you're, yeah. Because you're true self. Is, that, is that the feeling of, of deep happiness? It can come like that, not necessarily, means okay. when it, as awareness it sees and it has no preference nor desires, then there's a contentment and they point mm. that 
the mind has to be content with awareness itself. Mm. Because in the beginning, the mind says, awareness? What mm. do I think? What, I can't do anything with that because I'm not going to gain anything. I'm not going <laughs> to gain awareness. Mm. So mm. it has to be content with the, this realization that yes, mm. Mm. And, and rest in awareness. Mm. Mm. So in the physical world, it actually is you're, you're happy with nothing. And nothing is everything. That's right. You, you, from the world, the world doesn't make you happy. So yeah, then the world. you're looking for the happiness from the world, which means you don't desire anything to get anything. Mm. Mm. Oh, very good. I like the, it's very. I like the way he presents this. It's beautiful. The the third one is inquiry into the self. That's the third mm. game. Who am and I? Yeah, they don't even just limit it to who am I because the moment that an inquiry happens, who is aware? Where does the mind has to go to see the question? Oh, oh, that's a good one. Where does the mind have to go to see that question? Well, doesn't the mind visualize the question? Okay. Therefore, it's removed. Means when you ask who is aware, check what happens. Self. So the question got absorbed in awareness. So silence happens. Yes, silence remains. It, it silence remains. The, right, that's the only thing that's the, right. So that's inquiry into the self because you huh. inquire. Mm. So it not get don't not to get stuck only to this who am I because then it can be mechanical. Yeah, I notice that too because I do it often. Um, it can become mechanical, but yet it can be a tool. It is. Self-inquiry is a third gate, and the, the, this self-inquiry is what they call it's a, the outcome is wisdom. I, I'll read the four of them. Okay, okay. And the fourth one they call, they used it satsanga, which is being in a co company of a wise being. Mm -hmm. Sa if we go satsanga. Yes, yeah, satsanga, like satsang, yeah. being Sat, the like of, right. of yourself, the truth. Yeah. Be, oh, being it. Oh, being right. in the truth. Yeah, in the presence of truth. And in who the is present truth is in the presence of yourself. Yeah. Hmm. This is and how one would know. One would notice that certain interaction with particular beings brings them back to themselves, illuminates hmm. the mind. Another interaction pulls them into this illusion and hmm. they totally forget who they are. This hmm. would ways to gauge for oneself not for anybody else to see ah. what brings them back and what pulls ah. them out that's all mm -hmm. not to project on somebody anything because if we go and we say what is wisdom and we look where Ramana points what wisdom is and I'm aware I'm, we're touching a subject and I'm moving around So these four gates actually happen all at once. So mm, they support each other. We'll we'll see. Okay. Okay. They ask Ramana, what is the relation between desirelessness and wisdom? And he answers, desirelessness is wisdom. 
Yeah, sure. That's he's pointing about the second gate. He contentment. Yes, contentment. Or one would say self surrender. When you surrender to what is, then there is no I, there is no desire. I want it to be different. Mm, yes, that's exactly. Yeah, okay. that's contentment. Oh, right. And then he continues. The two are not different. They are the same. Desirelessness is refraining from turning the mind outwards any, to any object. Wisdom means the appearance of no object. In other words, not seeking what is other than the self is detachment or desirelessness. Not mm. leaving the self is wisdom. Mm. Okay. Now we, so we, we never leave the self. We never leave the self. So, so, so then w w wisdom is, is then not a guide to, to awareness. It is awareness. This is why when one listens sincerely and there is just listening without a listener, then awareness is the one that is aware of what's coming. Um, when you're focused on what Alon is saying, you're only focused on what Alon is saying. You're not wrong. Yes. He's not alone. Yes. You just focus. Okay, yes. You're in awareness. Mm. Right? Yes. The one who is aware of all of it. Is you. All of it. Yes. Mm. You're aware of all of it. Mm. Mm. So the third gate is mm. what they call satsanga. And fourth they, gate. They're not talking about orders of the gates. They're talking about four different gates. And why and and, and so why does he call them gates? Because they are the gates for the mind to subside into awareness. So any one of them will work. Yes. So they say, they point, so far we talked about uh, self-control, then contentment, then inquiry, and right. then the last one is the satsanga. Satsanga. Okay. And then... Um, uh, if we if we look <clears throat> I'd like to bring it back to someone that the moment you're aware and you stay with that awareness your universal knowledge start to reveal itself means you start to have a particular realizations even about the phenomenal mind mm. Mm. Where does True. It came from from yourself mm. 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 so the mind tend to look for something supernatural super or super powers or different things that and it imagines all kind of things mm. That's a story. Yeah. It's a good story. It is a story. It is a story. Yeah. So the four, he called them. He calls them gates. So. Yeah, he calls them gates. Yeah, he says huh. the four gates are a, it's a contentment, desirelessness, satsanga, which means being with wise beings, the, the, the spirit of self-inquiry, and the self-control. They, the, they are the safest way 
for the ones who drown in the samsara means the repeated history of birth and death yeah. uh, can say can be saved and he continues contentment desirelessness it's the highest achievement content no the second gate is the highest achievement yeah he yeah he says contentment is the highest achievement satsanga is the best company for the mm. in the journey yeah. very beautiful spirit of inquiry into the self is the biggest wisdom and self self control means self awareness is the highest joy and peace ah. highest joy self self control yeah yes. it's it yeah. awareness self control means at least how he defines it here in yoga vashista he says um the one that is that the when the mind subsides in the eternal peace he is the one who control in control of himself and and he calls that joy that's yeah the, 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 the mind in eternal peace yeah. that's beautiful that itself is joy yes yeah. bliss bliss which he calls joy yeah very nice yeah hmm so oh, I like all so these are the four four gates yeah and, ah, and he, he continues and he point he says if you cannot uh, direct yourself to to all these four then practice with one with repetitive earnest practice with one the other the other three will reveal themselves and the highest wisdom will seek you mm. that's here again he points how the highest wisdom which is yourself will seek you to itself mm. Mm. the analogy that can be pointed and one can experience when you have the recognition of yourself as yourself it's like a magnet that means the mind is closer to that awareness to this magnet it means the mind is just a thought the thought mm. the needle mm. to the magnet mm. and when the needle is close enough to a magnet what happens the magnet just magnetizes yeah. to her mm. It's like it's it's like the galaxy being absorbed by the black hole. Yes, it is a black hole. That's what it is. It is a black hole. The self is the black hole, which is not black at all. It's self effulgent or self luminous. Yeah, I mean the interesting thing when you think about it astrologically, I mean astronomy wise is everybody they call it the black hole but once uh, you're in the black hole it's only uh, unbelievable light and they even now have been able to get into the black hole to see that it's un it's an unbelievable light not black but yet it's called the black hole it's a, it's an amazing synergistic well actually since actually the whole universe is illusion it has to be a representation of awareness it does you're right it does it has to represent awareness right or not <laughs> 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 what comes is that is just to see that there are, we in the beginning it appears like there are two dimensions the dimension of awareness which is absolutely still aware of itself eternal peace 
mm. timeless being. And mm. the other dimension is name and form. Mm. The more you wake up, awareness wakes up to itself, this awareness start to absorb that ab bring. It's like permeating mm. consciously the name and form. And that's mm. what the mystery, in a mysterious way, mm. awareness is one with the name and form, yet it only knows itself as awareness mm. itself. And mm. then also things that were affecting the mind as an individual entity start to the edges start to be softened. Uh, yeah, blurred. Blurred. To be softer and softer, softer. So, mm. in a, mm. in a ma it ma magically way, it just transforms mm. Mm. the mm. name form mm. in a silent way. Mm. And when one is not awake to that dimension, the only dimension they are they recognize is the dimension of name and form only. And when you are mm. on mm. that dimension, mm. life very rough, mm. very rough, full of pain, full of suffering, mm. and desire and fear predominates mm. one's mm. life. Mm. And because name the forms undergo many changes and what the mind would call difficulties, life becomes very difficult, mm. very challenging because mm. there is not some, the, the, the most important dimension which mm. enables everything, the name and form to appear is not recognized and known. Mm. And this dimension, <laughs> Is ourself. Mm. I only have one difficulty. Only one? Yes. Undoing the packaging in Bangkok when I'm cooking. Doing the what? <laughs> <laughs> in Bangkok, they pack the food in a way that's impossible to undo. That is my biggest difficulty in life. If you watch, you might be, you might see that if you fully present with undoing, uh, yeah. it's, it's actually, a joy. It's an happening into itself, and you are just yeah. silently aware of it in yeah. the background, yeah. watching it all. Yeah. That'd be a good thing, because yeah, you know, I don't yeah. have to hear you swearing. <laughs> Here, there is another um, quote or whatever we want to call it. There's a question. Uh, how is the ego to be destroyed? Question mark. This question is a sure way to cherish the ego and not to kill it. Can the ego ever agree to kill itself? Question mark. If you seek the ego, you will find it does not exist. That's, that is the way to destroy it. Mm. 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 Never was. Pointing again on inquiry. Yeah. That's where the points to. Progress is for the mind and not for the self. The self is ever perfect. Mm. So the purpose of meditation is just to calm the mind. Mm. So meditation is a, just a, a sort of a mechanical way, like Marion says, it's just a mechanical way to calm the mind, that's all it can do. The, the thing is that I find is m 
even when the mind is calm, then there would be there would be other situations that the mind is opposite than calm. Yeah. Opening packages. Yeah. Then <laughs> if you you recognize that the one who sees the mind calm and mm. the one who sees the mind very active or reactive is you. Is, is you. Yeah. So they you stay. See it as yourself. Mm. Then you leave the mind alone. So is that then? It's, a, it's actually a question. So is is that possible in meditate in in meditation practices? Yeah, there are practices that quiet the mind. So, like breath control and some techniques in yoga, that mm -hmm. even they lose body consciousness. Mm -hmm. Yet. Ramana is pointing that it has to be done continuously and when they stop the mind continues, continues exactly the same so I can I can share what you I marked it actually yeah we read it in this book we read it so so he says so meditation has to be continuous now what is everly continuously present is be the self. self. Yes. So being the self is in meditation. So true meditation is mm. being yourself. Mm. Mm. And the mind doesn't know how to be the self because the yes. mind is a movement mm. in the self. Mm. The, the movement is the movement is the mind, right? Yes. Yeah, that's what I thought you said. The little self. Okay. Yeah, sure. It all makes sense. Yeah. It all ties up, ties into everything. It, it, you know, and what, what makes sense is that is the sense. there is no sense, actually. It's only the mind trying to make sense out of it. Points. The self is not somewhere far away to be reached. Mm. You are always there. Mm. You have only to give up your habit of identifying yourself with the non-self. All effort is only for that. Mm. What I've noticed within when I made an effort not to identify with the thoughts, what happens, I made, I sustained the false identification as a separate mm. entity. Mm. Because I was trying mm. not to I, the same I, to identify. Mm. Yet, so that, the you see well, it, you're the one who sees it. So that's insanity. So that's insanity. Yes. This is this confu this can be confusion. This is called confusion. Yeah, this it can be insanity. Hmm. This is the dog chasing its tail. But we all do it. Or we, did it. It's a necessary if it happens. For 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 it to reveal itself or that it will be it would be seen by me mm. I am the seer mm. and the eye that is trying to get rid from the false identification is seen by mm. the seer which is myself mm -hmm. mm. you have to be you you have to be prepared for that called preparation meets opportunity very seldom it comes by itself the 
there was one more beautiful thing that I'd like to share to read for all of us. So actual in actuality then alone that it uh, looks like uh, the self once one is very firmly rooted in self uh, the mind becomes a tool of the self. That's right. That's right. It's, we can see also that the mind can talk on behalf of the, the world, on behalf of the body, on behalf of the emotion, on behalf mm. of the thought, and it can talk on behalf of awareness. Mm. Mm. And it doesn't have to be it in order to speak about it. Means it can speak about the rain, and the, one, the thoughts about the rain mm. is not the rain itself. It can mm. speak about awareness, yet it is not the awareness itself. Mm. So we can see it, it has the ability to do it. So if you recognize it, it turns to be a tool also for sharing that which is beyond the one who is sharing it. And the mind is sharing it through word, something that is prior to the thought itself. Yet that enables awareness to, to emanate through the words mm. and bring clarity or dispel the illusion. So but the clarity then but the clarity actually comes from the self, not from the mind. The mind just is a pro, is just a projector of that. And it's sometimes difficult to distinguish if this is just uh, intellectual or is this coming from the self for other people I don't know for other people it's each one has to recognize if they have the sense felt experience the sense of I am the sense of I am aware yes mm. Mm. I am means mm who I am mm -hmm. and the words spoken through from that sense then clarity speaks by itself there's no mm -hmm. one being clear mm -hmm. other times that the mind is clear because there can be a state of mind that would be different and there and can it be distinguished from from the outside, or from the illusion itself, can it be distinguished in the illusion itself? Can it be distinguished, or the words are the same? From the outside, I do not know, mm. because I I'm not from the outside. I am behind before, so I see the thoughts, the sensation, sense of perception. Mm -hmm. so I don't know from the outside. The outside means. It's, I, I come from the background all the way through, mm -hmm. also you and everybody else. So uh, but, uh, but the Are you asking, can yeah. someone else distinguish right. where it's coming from? Yes, yes. 
Yes. It cannot be distinguished by an out another. another. It can only, he only can recognize what happens to himself mm. when it comes from the, through the other. I mean, it can come from a rock. It can come mm. from a tree. And then you have a sense of yourself mm. that appears like it comes from through the other, yet something awakened inside you. Mm. Mm. Oh, it's just a reflection. Yes, yeah, so I don't know. Okay. It's the mm. light bouncing off an object. If I if I go back I I look at from within let's say I I say like is this man is this being realized or not yeah let's mm -hmm. okay that's what I'm asking yet everyone is the self Mm. So can he be anything other than the self? I see his disguise. I see the the shell, the body, yeah. Yeah. and I hear the words that are coming. These are mm. two disguises. They disguise awareness. Yet everyone is awareness. The, mm. All there is is awareness. So if I recognize mm. that it's all awareness, so whether awareness in in him awakened to itself or not. Okay, I understand. Matter. Maybe it's not his time yet. Uh, yeah. It's time for wake, awareness to wake, wake up yet. Whether there is the knowingness or not knowingness makes no difference. He is awareness yeah. in a name and a form, yet the pure soul residing, permeating every name and every form. So therefore it's only through the content of the words that the person may speak which will allow you to realize whether they have self-awareness. Yeah, that's, that's, I think that was a question. No, even this is not enough. Because okay. there can be many different expressions through the disguise. And the disguise can be expressed in a very unpredicted and nonsense way verbally, yet something else emanates through this being that would be silently permeating you and you don't know you unless you suddenly start to experience yourself in that presence of this form so it's there is otherwise we the mind turns puts it into boxes this is how it should look like this is how mm. it should be this is and we do not know the other yet one thing for certain awareness is one it permeates everything and everyone is in it so everyone is awareness whether they know it or not they are awareness they might think they are a separate entity that might they might think that they are awareness yet if it only remains in their thinking process they they mm. think they are awareness mm. then they mm. only think there is not the knowing of awareness mm. Mm. And it's mm. only would be, they have to be mm. honest and sincere between themselves. It's not anyone else's business, anyhow. Mm. 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 Does that answer your question? Yeah, because I've, I've, I experienced that as, um, personally, as, as arrogance. Yeah. What do you mean? Do you understand? He does. Arrogance mean, would mean that 
someone say I am awake and you are not mm. no 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 let's let's start from the beginning I am is awareness and this mm. I am is is residing within everyone mm. everyone is this awareness mm. Mm. all the rest is distinctions in the mind mm. and this distinction has to be closely looked at closely mm. examined closely because that's what the ego does the ego labels higher lower better mm. worse this person knows more I know less or this person mm. knows more and this person knows less too different yeah, it doesn't matter mm. it 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 discrim it dis discriminates between the objects of the world or the words mm. yet awareness just sees it all mm -hmm. it mm. is not in the story or it is not the one who is telling the story it permeates the storyteller and the story itself mm. Mm. It, it doesn't really care that's why a lot of a lot of times people say he know or she knows more than I do yeah this might be on the objects of the world self-knowledge knowing yourself as yourself is it's inherent mm. it's it's the essence of everyone. Mm -hmm. Just move yes. the reflection, and then you think, because then the mind is more, the attention is locked or attached to the the verb, the mental uh, speaking in the mind, the mm -hmm. voice in the mind, the images in the mind to be the truth, and then. It's relative. It's always compare comparison. Mm. This is why when you you bring you allow the dimension of self awareness to to be without obscuring it with the conceptual images or concepts of the mind, then you see everyone with the equal eye means mm. A physical eye sees mm. and awareness sees through it. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to say. Mm -hmm. Yet it speaks in a very powerful force of silence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yet it's just a different power the mind is conditioned to or used to because it is only looking out through the senses to the objects of the world or mm. trapped in mm. the thinking process mm. no, so that it, it, that. It. it says no this is nonsense this mm -hmm. is not real power if I'll gain more if I'll have more if I'll mm. control more mm. if I'll achieve more this is where the mind imagines the power will reside. Mm. I exist without a thought. Thought cannot appear without me. So I'm enabled. Mm. Mm. Even mm. the one thinking all this power mm. that it will gain to appear. Mm. So therefore, so therefore, if the self did not occupy the body-mind complex, we would have a zombie. It's far from the truth. This it's is what the mind imagines. This mm. is me. We didn't enable to plunge into the water of the self to this mm. ocean of self-awareness mm. it's far from the truth it's the mind imagines it and it's its tactic to scare itself and negate mm. 
the self mm. itself. Mm. Tricky bugger. <laughs> like sometimes the mind says, as long as there is a body, you cannot wake up to awareness. This is just a thought, an idea. Mm -hmm. It has nothing mm -hmm. to do from awareness and truth. It has nothing mm -hmm. to do. Awareness is omnipresent. It's always here. Mm. And what? How far do I have to travel? Being awareness is a thought. Mm. So, but the teaching, you know, it's interesting that the you know the teachings state that, and I, you can understand it to to really appoint you. You you need. It really helps to have a healthy mind, whatever that means, and a healthy body uh, to realize who you really are for self-realization. Because the body could... Hmm? I don't know. I, honestly, I do not know. Because then because. It's, the, the, it's the thought, or I have this idea, not awareness. Yes, the, yes, yes. You do have it, it is it is the little self that has this thought, but because of, of the of the idea that if the little if the self, the small self, is in physical pain, a chronic illness or kind of pain, uh, they this is where they reside. They reside in the body. Not necessarily, because there can be so much excruciating pain that the thought subsides, and then what illuminates is awareness through. Mm. And also, mm. can the body get very sick and weak and transparent, and suddenly, and the mind just rests because it's exhausted, and mm. then suddenly, the illumination of presence. Mm. It's why I do mm. I do not know. Maybe somebody else have an idea about it. I, I do not yeah, know. Mm. I see awareness mm. not dependent. Yeah, it's not awareness dependent, but it seems to be stated in so many books. Buddha, and then, you know, they refer to Buddha as saying that a healthy mind, healthy body, is a good tool to have. So I find from experience that any tool I've practiced and used was limited. And it was, so it was being used until the mind reacted and lost control. Then the tool is gone. Or when there was excruciating pain and the mind couldn't, function properly because it was in such reaction, the tool was gone. Yet I never lost myself. Awareness was never gone. It was not even affected by whatever phenomena that happened. And that's why it's so essential to, to, to just allow awareness to wake up to itself. Mm -hmm. Because this is the only thing that is absolutely unshakable. And it's you. It's no, no other than, some, it's not somebody foreign to you. It is you, this unshakable presence, unshakable mm. peace. Mm. So... I I'm for practices. Mm -hmm. and, okay. And, and and more is that there is an awakening to your essential being. How does it happen? I have no idea. It just happens. Mm -hmm. And not in the future. Awareness is presently aware. Mm -hmm for everyone right now. Mm -hmm. But it's, yeah, and I agree, yeah, I, it's not an agreement or nothing else, but you, you, like you just stated that, you know, you you are into practices, right? 
practices have their use and time. Yeah. yeah. They do have their uses. And time. Yeah. And if in the practices are useful in times and so forth, it's uh, it it does seem to be beneficial to have a healthy mind. Yeah. And, and not a healthy mind cannot practice. That oh that's only okay. a healthy mind can really practice because it has the ability to concentrate, to to inquire, to fix the attention. Right. I and think that's what I was saying. Yeah. Okay. And when I look at practices, it's it's practices that will enable the practicer to disappear. Mm. 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 Yeah, that's it's the purpose of the practice. If the practice enhances the sense of mm. individuality or separation, mm. it inflates mm. the ego. Can I become a very good practicer? Mm. But that's okay too. There is a room for everything. Yeah, there's a room for that. <laughs> there's infinite space and everything can appear inside. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, there's plenty of room. <laughs> oh, good. Huh. So I haven't found that uh, phrase. I remember it vaguely. The question was, what, what is the self? And the answer was, the self is the witness of the mind. The, the mind is witnessed by myself. Mm. Yeah, I don't know if somebody would like that kind of an answer because it's difficult for the mind to understand that. Except you can be it. You are the you witness. We are the witness. So I mean, so. Oh, witness. Self is the witness of the mind. Okay, yes. Yeah. Self is the witness of the mind. The yeah. mind is witnessed by the mind, by the self. Yeah. By mm. myself. It's who I am. Yeah. Yeah. That's who I am. That's who we are. Mm. Yeah. Silence and you are one and the same. They're not mm. separate. Yeah. Sometimes the mind has to hear it, hear it, hear it, and then when it steps away, you sense it. No more intellectually hearing it. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. sense it. You being mm -hmm. it. And this mm -hmm. being awakens more and more to itself. It's this space awakens to itself. It can mm. be an analogy of I'm in the car, the car is the body. Then there's a person driving the car, that's the mind. And mm -hmm. there's a space in the car that, that the mind, the driver is sitting in. That space, when it awakens to itself, in mm. the car, that's awakening. Mm. So when awareness awakens to itself as awareness, that's awakening. It's a oh, that's no yeah. And so the that's car is inside this awareness. Aha! Uh -huh. So, uh -huh. so it, it, oh my God! That's a that's a that's a, a that's an unusual analogy that the self awakens up to itself and the question would the question would be why would it need to awaken up to itself when it is the self it was why? hypnotized by, by what by the, the divine power 
I have no idea. By Maya, they okay. gave it to me. Born into a field okay. of ignorance. Okay, okay. Born into the field of ignorance. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> and awareness never changes, so it was fine for it. Okay. That's as far as we go. Okay. <laughs> there is okay. a thing I heard that uh, huh. Buddha, just as a story, and a story is just a story, huh. used the analogy that when somebody got an arrow stuck in, inside him, mm. now he could say, okay, why did somebody shoot me? How come did it hit me? And I wonder what's the reason all of that happened. And mm. Buddha said, don't occupy with this question. Just take care of pulling out the arrow mm. from your body. Yeah. yeah, that's a beautiful one. I always use that analogy with the American car makers and the Japanese. The Americans ask this question is why, why, why? And the Japanese just fix it and, once, and then go back and figure out why. And that's why their success has been so unbelievable over the years. Yeah, temporary success. Temporary success, but it worked. Yeah. <laughs> temporarily, everything might look like it works. Yeah, temporarily. <laughs> we have to yeah. wake up to what's permanent. Yeah, we, we have to wake up what's permanent. Temporary, yes. somebody said, wow, it was a great success. and few years later or 1,000 years later, that success is gone, mm. finished. Mm. Mm. And that which is permanent is you. So, Does um, Romana speak about rooting yourself into the self instead of this fluctuation back and forth? Yes, yes. Being rooted in yourself means yeah. When the thought gets, when the attention goes on the thought and mm. gets attached to it, it starts to wander. Now it's not rooted in awareness. Yet mm. when this happens and you see it, it dissolves. It dissolves. And then you're, you're being rooted again. You're being rooted again. Mm. Except mm. you always be, you are being rooted also when the attention is on the thought. Yet what happens, I just believe that I am the one who is thinking this thought and that gives me the notion that I am not rooted in awareness as awareness because I am suddenly the movement in awareness. Suddenly in the story. Oh, so, so then, uh, then, then if, the, if the concept of I is not there, you're rooted in it. Even when the concept I yeah. appears, I am that. I am that. The thought mm -hmm. is that creates the illusion right. that I am not that. Mm -hmm. Tell the story that I am not that. I am as awareness never says that it is not awareness. It never says it is awareness. It mm -hmm. is always... Oh. Your awareness. Mm. So the only handicap one has is the thought. Yes. Yet if it's I see only. it, which I'm always the seer, I mm. am the seer of the thought, mm. the thought loses the power. Mm. <laughs> Instantly. Oh, so we're back in the fact that, that, that the, uh, the awareness has to wake up to itself. Discrimination. Hmm? If the awareness didn't want to wake up, we yes. wouldn't be in this discussion. Yeah. <laughs> it would. It would. <laughs> okay, it's true. It's all true. Uh -huh. <laughs> We will stop for now. It's so lovely to listen to the talking.
and uh, just be. And mm. uh, I feel uh, just gratitude and uh, and love, which is being present, and uh, kindness and goodness. So I'm very, very thankful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Soon? Yes. Let us know. Just okay. tell us. Just tell us. <laughs>